What's going on you gamers? Here we are back with some more Aliens Fireteam Elite and today I'm going to be going over my revised version of the Technician's Endgame build. So if you're trying those tougher difficulty settings like Intense, Extreme or Insane then stay tuned, this build should help you next. Welcome back all you gamers, as always, for things gaming, for things Xbox, then why not hit that subscribe and bell icon. I'll bring you all the latest and greatest in hints, tips, guides and builds, and just some fun gameplay reviews and content. But for today, I'm here to show you my revised version of this fella right here, the Technician. Now, in my opinion, the Technician is very possibly one of the best classes in the game. Absolutely amazing for late game, good at the early game, and he's just a lot of fun to play. He does a fair chunk of change with his damage, but also, when you need those defences, he's right there for you. And for late game, such as, like I said, the intense or extreme, or even if you are actually insane enough to play insane, he can really help you out. So, what does he bring to the table? So for out and out flat damage, he's not going to be outperforming someone, say for example such as the Gunner, who can just do his overclock ability and absolutely melt bosses. However, he does still do a lot of damage. He is a great, great damage dealer and also his sentry turret does a lot of work. He's very efficient and definitely in those scenarios when you need to hold down a location, he's very possibly the best you can have. Now what I'm trying to do with this build is to make it so that you can work very well in a team. Like I said, it's very end game orientated, but it's also very, very good for any kind of setting you want to play on. However, it will be using a few of the perks that you need to acquire through the game. So kicking it off with the pistol, and I'm going to be using this one right here, the Type 95 Combat Pistol. It does a fair chunk of damage, it's got a really nice fire rate, it's not got bad magazine capacity, and I find this, for myself, I find it's probably the best overall gun to use for the Technician in late game, just for how easy it is to use. For the attachments, we've got the Slide Compensator Small Muzzle. This gives it a bit more stability of 30% and weak point damage of 20%. Like I said, you're gonna be getting a lot of headshots with this, try and chuck on as much weak point damage as you can. After that, we've got the Tactical Mag, Fire Rate plus 20% and Max Ammo plus 35% ammo 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 whenever you can if you're trying the tougher difficulties you'll probably want to chuck some into ammo if you can get it next up and just one of my go-to's on pretty much a lot of my guns is the micro red dot sight weak point damage 15 handling plus 15 zoom magnification plus 10 percent and plus five aim assist on hit for three seconds which can stack up to five times it's really nice and its perks just over here help it out as well so you've got 5% stability, 5% stability, 5% fire rate, and 1% fire rate and stability on shot. The effect can stack five times and resets on reload. This right here does a lot more than you think, and because of how stable and accurate it is, you'll be getting an abundance of headshots. A really nice overall easy gun to use, and one that I find myself using pretty much in all situations. If I wanted one that did a little bit more Meteor damage, I'd probably jump straight over to the first one you get, the Kramer 50 Magnum. So if you're very, very good at headshots, if you'd rather be tapping that trigger rather than spamming it, this may be the gun you'll want to choose in its place. But those two are definitely the best options for myself. I find them really, really good and do a lot of damage at mid to long range. Now coming over to his close quarter weapon, and I've picked the M37A3 pump shotgun. This shotgun is just absolutely phenomenal. I didn't realize how good it was until I started using it as much as I have done. And since I have, I haven't really switched off of it much. It's obviously not got the fastest fire rate in the world. It's not got the best accuracy or stability, but it's just good at what it does. It really can one shot most things in the game, obviously the smaller enemies and when you get to later game difficulties such as the extremes, you will need to be getting those headshots, you will need to be getting a bit of weak point damage, but it will still nuke most of the smaller adds. It's just the kind of tougher elites and obviously the armoured enemies that you need to worry about a little bit. But most times you're in close quarters, so you'll also be having your flame turret hit them anyway, meaning their health is really going to be deteriorating fast anyway. Jumping over to our attachments, and we've got Precision Break, weak point damage plus 20 and effective range plus 30%. 
Just over here we've got reload speed plus 30% and max ammo plus 30% on our field reserves. Like I said, at endgame you really do need to have as much ammo as you can. I try to find a place for it in any kind of build because ammo is really, really scarce. Next up we've got a micro red dot sight. Nice bit of weak point damage, a little bit of handling and I like the zoom magnification. Also it gives you a little bit of aim assist that stacks 5 times. I really like this one, it's a nice easy one to chuck onto anything, but I find this work best for the shotty. Just going over to its perks and we've got 5% reload time, 5% reload time, 1 bonus projectile and last but not least, enemies take an additional 0.36% damage on hit for 5 seconds. This effect stacks per projectile that hits up to 13 times. Really nice, bit of extra damage and it can really work well with those overclock situations. Going over to the consumables, and what I've tried to do with this build is make it a bit of a slow down build. You're trying to give your team enough time to actually net the kills, you're trying to give yourself enough time to get the kills yourself and make things impaired with their speed. So I've chucked on a cryo grid, really really nice, impairs their speed and this actually works a lot better than I realised in going into a lot of the later sessions. The most you can have is free, but trust me, chuck one or two of these on those really tricky situations and they will really help you out as long as you put them a little bit further out and make sure your flame turret can still hit what is in front of it, this will definitely, definitely help you complete those tricky levels. Just after that, and I've gone with the hardened electroshock sentry gun. Again, nice and, nice and easy to use and it's going to help your team give them a little bit of breathing space because obviously the targets will be getting slowed down again or stunned in this respect really good to use if you didn't want to use this and you wanted a little bit more damage maybe you could chuck on a flamer but i found this was best in slot for this type of build so for his technician grid the first thing we're going to start off with is the incinerator turret just absolutely amazing for those really really tough scenarios this is just an absolute beast it will melt most things it does a lot of damage and the damage over time is really nice what we've put with that is dynamic delivery systems. Your turret now fires 10% faster and deals 25% more damage to armor. Now the armor targets in this game are the ones that are going to give you trouble a lot of times. So being able to knock their armor down a little bit is always, always really helpful. So that you can smash through their health a little bit quicker. Just over here we've got real times resource reclamation. When your turret is destroyed it explodes, dealing damage to nearby enemies, reduces the base recharge time of your turret by 5 seconds. Now the explosion's good, it's not the best, we're not using it for that to be perfectly honest, we're just using it to get those 5 seconds off of our time, meaning we've got 10 seconds between each window of being able to use our turret. And just over here I've put on a false multiplier free. I try to put a little bit of extra damage into the turrets whenever I can. I usually have on two. In this build, I could only fit on one, but I still like to chuck a little bit of extra damage on it, I must admit. So it increases the damage of an ability by 18%. You're going to be using your turret a lot. You're going to be relying on it to flame and nuke everything. So giving it a little bit more damage is always a nice thing to do. Now bopping over to the right and we've got hyperlocal logistics. Increase your turret's health regeneration rate while you are near and your turret's fire rate 10% faster while you are near it. So again you're doing a bit more rapid fire with your turret and you're able to heal it while you're standing next to it. You in most cases will be standing very close to it because you don't want to move too far away from it especially when you're holding down those locations. This really helps to keep it around a little bit longer and yourself. And next up, and jumping just above, we've got Scalable Machine Learning. This is a core perk, and when your turret kills an enemy, gain 10% reload speed and stability. This effect can stack up to 5 times. This is nice, it really helps to make those shotgun shots a lot more stable, but the main reason we're using it for is so that we can grab the other one just underneath, the modular integration. Each stack of Scalable Machine Learning also increases your accuracy and fire rate by 5%. This allows you to shoot really, really fast. It really does. And overclock with this, with some fast firing guns, can be absolutely ridiculous. Next up, and the perk that you find in the kind of the kind of hidden perk as such that you'll find in the intense caches is creative pain point solutions. You and your turret deal 10% more damage to slowed enemies. We are trying to make a build all about impairing their movement, so this right here works really well. 
Also, if you've got things like a phalanx in your team or someone that's helping slowing down in some way, this can really, really help out for those tougher enemies. Next up, bopping over to the right here, and we've got Extended Duration 3. Increases the duration of an ability by 18%, and we've attached that to our charge coils, meaning it's going to be out a little bit longer because we really want that uptime. Just down here, and we've got the Long Haul. This increases the duration of an ability by 20%. Now this is a perk that you can grab off of the Recon class. I can't remember if it's the hidden perk or if it's just one they unlock, but either way it's an amazing one to put on because it's going to increase the duration of that ability again by another 20%. So if we look over here, now we've got 38% ability duration and 18% ability radius. If you haven't got this, chuck anything into this slot that you think will help out a little bit. At the moment, the cooldown time doesn't really work on charge calls, on the Xbox for myself at least, so I wouldn't chuck on anything to do with cooldown, but anything to do with either keeping the charge coil out longer or maybe give it a little bit more radius, whatever you want to do, chuck something nice in that slot if you aren't able to give it any duration. I myself found duration probably the best because you want them around as long as possible so that you're able to affect their movement speed as much as possible. Next up, and we've got Enhanced Reach 3. Like I said, you're trying to get as much as you can out of this. The charge coils work nice, but I found a little bit of extra reach really helps you out. So this gives you 18% extra radius. Really nice. If I could, I probably would put a little bit more on it as well. That way you'll only really need to chuck out two of the charge coils at any time. But this still works amazing, and I found a little bit of extra radius really helped out to keep those Xenos away from the team. Lastly, we're going over to the compatibility matrix. While the ability is active, you deal 10% more damage and stacks up to three times. Now, in my original build, I made a boo-boo because I chucked that over to this one right over here on the sentry turret because it doesn't exactly tell you what it does. I thought it would just scale with either its kills or its longevity because it's out for a long time. Apparently at the moment, it only works by how many uses you do. So if you put it over to here, apparently it only gives you 10% currently, which is a little bit odd, but maybe it's something they've got to fix or maybe it's intended and they just haven't written it anywhere. But if you chuck it on charge coils, most of the time you're going to be chucking at probably two, giving yourself an extra 20% damage and really, really nice. If you wanted a nuke move, say there's a tough guy coming in, you're going to be spamming these anyway. You may well use all three, giving yourself that 30% extra bonus to your damage. Really nice and really good for taking out those tougher enemies. Right with you gamers, I hope that's helped a few of you out. This is the guy that I'll be using on all of the tougher difficulties with this build. I must admit, I tend to use him on intense mainly and then extreme when I can jump in with nice teams. I haven't gone through insane with him as such yet because you're going to want a really good team with a lot of teamwork. Otherwise, you're just going to get really frustrated and no one build will carry you through that. But this is the guy that I will be playing through when I need to complete the last of the missions for the achievement and unlocks. As always, guys and girls, full things gaming, full things Xbox. Take care. I'll see you on the next day.